Cover Junkies to Cover Decoder. It is the show Woo! where we open the hot jug of milk and swallow the lumpy cover chunks within. Ooh. What? Why? Ooh. Why is every intro you gotta uh, love disgusting? Covers if you're willing to do that. Yeah, they they are chunks and they are lumpy. Uh, so I, you're you're Tom cruising <laughs> it. We're we're gonna Tom Cruise it like in Minority Report. Is that oh, is that the idea? Oh yeah, when he eats the eyeballs. No, yeah, no, no he's, well, he gets his eyeballs, eyeballs swapped out, and he goes to the fridge to get something to drink, and he can't see, and he drinks the rotten oh, milk. Oh wow, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he doesn't remember. He doesn't remember the shelves, and I was like, dude, he's gonna eat someone's eyeballs. I, so that's yeah, how I, it, even if it I planned happen. that. I I totally planned that reference, <laughs> uh, and you caught up on it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I am Tapes, uh, and with me as ever are my fellow knights of Cumberland. I'm so glad they're on this journey with me. We got Inks to my uh, right on the screen, and we have Tally Ho, the uh, the Eternal Engine Brengineer. You're gonna like what you hear. You're gonna like what you hear. <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. As ever, folks, remember you can follow along with our images today at CoverDecoder.com. How are we doing, fellas? I'm doing good. Uh, yeah, I got I got my new studio set up at home. Oh, was it yeah. COVID times. Folks, you should have heard the bridge here right before. He's like, let me turn on my JXLs real quick. You're going to like, JBLs. My JBLs. You very much. <laughs> he would not now, stop Now, let me, tell you, let, let me tell you a quick story about my luck. I have terrible luck. Yeah, tell us things. about the JBLs. Uh, yeah, uh, about almost four weeks ago, I ordered these things. Now I uh -huh. get it's COVID times. I get, I get it, it's the, it's the hard times. Right. And, uh, a friend of mine ordered them this, the same day or the day after, cause we we're talking about them. We both got them. So, uh, he gets his, uh, a week in and mine had yet to arrive. The bastard. And oh. Because I'm a patient person. I'm, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting two weeks in. I finally email like, hey, uh, so what's going on uh, with my order? My jibbles. Um, they they say, oh well, we're we're just waiting uh, on another piece of your order to to show up. So all this time, uh, oh no, without any what, communication, you add, like, a wooden leg in the box or something. Like, what'd you? <laughs> well, there there are some like little speakers that came with it, and they didn't have those. Uh, and so finally, they uh, they arrive. There's a knock at my door. Uh, I get one speaker. One speaker oh. has arrived, and and no. the cables, and I open up the cables. They're the wrong cables. <laughs> I I wait I wait almost four weeks. I get one speaker, and two cables that don't work, and then four or five days later, the second speaker arrives. Oh uh, man! It, it it was awful, but now now I have them. They sound glorious. And to top uh, it off, I'm, I'm, inside the second I'm box in, was a human turd with the note that says, "Order some different shit." <laughs> <laughs> Here's your that, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> a very, a very unhappy uh, Bezos worker, just uh, laying a hate log on your speaker. <laughs> <laughs> Lord Bezos sends his oh. regards. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, there you have it, folks. Uh, order your speakers in advance because yes. you're not going to get them in the same package. Brengineers committed. Absolutely. He you know, speaking, I'm, I'm speaking just patient, of commitment, just folks. Uh, we have been asking, we have been putting out in the airwaves to give us your covers, to give, give us, us your, your lovely morsels of, of cover, mm -hmm. of covered them. We want those chips. That's right. We want the chips to eat, to, to savor. For a while there, we were waiting in vain for, for the sun chips. The, uh, the sun Absol chips weren't arriving. The elusive sun chips. He picked the best chips. And finally, <laughs> folks, we have a cover. We have a fan cover. It's here. Woo. Yes. We did it. We do. It's our first Absolutely. our first email. Our first email ever. And it came with a no, cover. Someone no, took no, the no, Brenjir no, Challenge. Yeah. So right now, we want to say to you, AJ out there listening, when the line faltered and they were fearful to charge, you took the reins of your steed and you forged into reins. battle. You slayed the enemies of Coverdom left and right, slayed and you drew them. the others into the fight, and you won the battle against the Gornak that yes. day. You have Huzzah. entered, you have entered. Cover Holla, and we salute you here at Cover Decoder. And if you guys, Huzzah, if, AJ. Yeah, yeah. Our, our hats, our cover hats are off to you. And if you guys want to enter Cover Holla, you got to send us your covers. And so what we're gonna do right now, in honor of you, AJ, is we are going to review, look at, decode the cover you've sent us. So, uh, fellas, That's go ahead right. and open up the cover for the 2019 album 
uh, by X Hex. It's real. And boy, is this cover really something? <laughs> this is this is right up. This is right up uh, Inks Alley. Because first, as first we of all, say can we over and over and over again? again, Inks likes pinks. Inks likes pinks. Inks pinks. likes pinks. Inks likes pinks. Clearly, clearly, AJ knows uh, Inks' uh, preferences quite well because this is uh, saturated. <laughs> yeah, in, uh, AJ, pink. you picked a big one. Uh, who who wants to describe this gem? <laughs> well, it's largely uh, well. The focus is the, is the band name, and and we have a bunch of different styles of oh yes of we do font going, going on, on here. So uh, the album is called "It's Real," and that kind of has uh, uh, where do you even begin <laughs> with this thing? Uh, so <laughs> all the all the fonts, uh, the, the the various fonts are rendered three dimensional. They are um, they are hip hop fonts too. These are mm. all school yeah, looking hip hop fonts. Yeah, they are. all sort of wacky uh, fonts. Uh, so the middle <laughs> one is this emerald shiny green metal kind of deal. Um, the the bottom one looks like a pixelated kind of deal, and it's got a fill of gradiated pink. The top's got this uh, red electro disco ball. Yeah, thing. They're like uh, some Tesla balls. Yeah, I, can I jump light? in for just a second on this one? Like, I'm imagining that those are the eyes of a giant mechanical crab, a crab mech <laughs> that is <laughs> totally. just waiting under the uh, fart cloud to, <laughs> to spring forth. And yeah, there's a, the there's a artist fart did cloud. something that we all do that if, if you run out of time, you just add some explosion or some mist and boom, you're done. You like uh, what you see. I'm but be I'm honest. seeing. I'm waiting for the crab monster to rise up out of the pink mist. This is this is supposed to look very three dimensional and very like it's supposed to have layers, but it looks so flat. Uh, and here's the problem with this cover. So first of all, if you guys notice where the cool pexelated hex is, which is probably my favorite part, the clouds, the the puffy uh, pink intestiny anal clouds, are there's a line. There is a straight line where it separates yep. from the background cloud, from the, the back clowns there. Uh, and then, so clearly they just put that over to cover the poles here, and then the background <laughs> is completely 2D. Like, it looks like your little 2D Mario dude is going to be jumping on those buildings yeah. trying to collect mm -hmm. bananas. I like, I like yeah. the background. Yeah. Uh, the, cities, the cityscape works. The, the psychedelic, there's these psychedelic, it almost looks like a, a 60s ink sort of the ink shows they used to do in the 60s psych bands. Uh, it's got this really uh, jarring contrast of... This of is jarring. I'll give you that. The, yeah. Yeah. There, there's... So, the if, if you can't pick one cloud, just pick them all. Because we've got the <laughs> hazy mist clouds in the front. Then we got the fluffy, you know, uh, dimensional clouds... Um, in the in the cloud lasagna we have here on the bottom we've got the misty clouds. Dude, this is a middle, lasagna, but it's all the different types of cultures. The bottom got, layer is American, the second layer is Chinese, clouds, and the top yeah. layer is Indian food. And in the in the cityscape we've got the highly stylized, you know, like block cut cloud, like 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 cut out clouds, and then we go oh. back to gradient clouds. So I, for me, this looks like an experiment. This is someone who is learning, and as we know. We will not commit the sin of the art teacher and tell them that their portfolio sucks. But this is a start, friend. We and so first of all, Inks, we are absolutely going to tell the artist this sucks. Okay, because it, we're we're gonna dive, <laughs> we're gonna dive into the artist here. This was I have a feeling I have a feeling it's one of the band members. No, this is not one of the band members. This was hey, how much are you gonna pay me for this? I we got 150 bucks well, of bar in, money. In, in, okay, in, in all, I will send you something. I will send you something. Honesty, in all, yeah, this is this is definitely a band member. In all honesty, certain elements taken by itself are good. The the E and the X by themselves are good. The cityscape and the um the the stylized clouds by themselves are good. The they're clouds good. Yeah. not bad. They're not good. But, but the clouds I, again, oh, wait, wait, wait. We're talking about the the, the psych clouds. I'm talking about yeah, the, the psych, psych yeah, clouds. The psych clouds there, are great. There are elements that are pretty good, but this is what I'm talking about when you design a camel instead of a beautiful horse. You know, you, you gotta learn when to to pick something and stick with it. And you know, I've I've 
I've done this so many times. I'm still doing it. We're all learning. But um, definitely. You've, you've pooped out bad artwork for people? Is that something you do regularly, uh, Iggs? Oh, I'm, I'm doing it right now. I'm making y- the yeah. uh, <laughs> most lumpy camel. But here's the thing is that happens You're sometimes. You just got to stick out your chest and believe in what you believe in and stick with one style. So there are certain things like the little sparkles on the E and the X. Like that's that's some good graffiti shit. But um, all together, the cover's rough. So let's yeah. let's let's talk about the band real quick. So the band is called uh, X Hex. It's reels from 2019. It's their second full release. Kind of cool. They're an all female. Like they're an all female rock and roll group, which w- I thought was really cool. You don't yeah. see that a whole lot. It yeah. had no. It, it had. Um, it's got some Ramones going on there. It's it, got yes. some sort of psychedelic rock going on in there. Yeah. It's you know got what it sounds like? Rock uh, kind of thing. Brent, Brendan, you'll appreciate this, but I could really get some like uh, dinosaur junior witch type vibes oh for yeah. sure yeah. i was in the vocals i was hearing definitely that sort of like 70s debbie harry uh the motels kind of you know chick rock from the 70s going yeah. on in there that being the said vocals. i can't help when i listen to it so the songs that stuck out to me were no reflection tough enough and another dimension i thought those songs were actually really cool i enjoyed them everything else fluctuated between something off the 10 things i hate about you soundtrack uh, and a, co- a a band playing a college sorority oh. or frat party. That, yeah, that fair that's enough. that's what this sounded like to me. I, I I'm not gonna go out on a limb and say like I am going to listen to this again. I will definitely not be listening to it again. Um, I could see people really enjoying it, uh, and I could see it taking off. Oh well, yeah, they they seem like they're a popular band though. Like, There's, yeah. judging by uh, judging by how many people have purchased on Bandcamp and whatnot. It looks like uh, yeah, fairly know. popular. Now yeah, here, they're, here's they're, what's not okay. This was done in 2019 by a guy named Will uh, Sweeney. Will Sweeney is not in the band. So, uh, fellas, if you if you go ahead and look at the bottom here, I have a link. I know. Open up. The, I'm looking at it and I'm like blown away. This, this guy's stuff this is guy's so good. This guy's artwork is incredible. It is so cool. It looks like. Uh, Bren Engineer, you'll totally get this. It looks like a Blinko. It looks like um, uh, I love his sand. Uh, there's a sand person from uh, Star Wars, uh, or one of the Tusken Raiders. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, this guy's <laughs> stuff looks like something Inks would just spill his guts over. Uh, th- this guy's art is so stylized, and it's super, super catchy. It's super cool. Um, it looks like, uh, if you guys are familiar with Queens of the Stone Age, I highly recommend you go and look at some of their videos. Um, but uh, some of their videos have this kind of really cool Cartoon Network-esque style. Uh, it's very cool. It's Some of it is hyper-detailed, but it's very uh, stark contrast colors. Uh, and he has just very big, bright, bold colors. It's very cool. Uh, and his website looks great. So uh, yeah. we'll go ahead and we'll just we'll just talk about this guy for a quick second here. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and read his bio here. Uh, his website is really cool. I highly recommend checking it out. But he has a great little bio. Uh, it says, Will Sweeney is a London-based illustrator and graphic artist specializing in comics, clothing graphics, animated videos. He's collaborated and worked with a variety of labels, bands, uh, Undercover, Amos Toys, blah, 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 blah. Uh, he's also known for his comic series, Tale from the Green Fuzz, accompanying vinyl toys. Uh, he's exhibited his work in galleries all over the world. So this guy is not a low-key artist. Do. He is not Dang. a beginner. By 2019, this dude knows what he's doing. Uh, okay, I, I found the, I, I finally got onto the website, and you're right. The sand, this, the, uh, the, the sand person, uh, pink... It, it looks fantastic. Yeah. All uh, I mean, a lot of his stuff, he just leans into a certain style and does exactly what he needs to do. I don't know what happened on the XX. You know what? I, to- I told you what happened. What happened is they were like, hey, man, we have like two- like 200 yeah. bucks. Can you like give us a cover? And he sent them one 30 minutes later. <laughs> Here you go. You know what? Charlotte said that you owe her a favor <laughs> at one time. You know, so can you just like do something for a band? So it's kind of cool, but uh, while he was studying at the Royal College, I found a really cool uh, interview, uh, not interview, but uh, 
uh, bio about him. It, it turns out if you Google him, he is all over the place. Like I said, he's a really uh, popular artist. But, yeah. Uh, while he was studying at the Royal College of Art, mm, he spent most of his time just kind of <laughs> playing. Uh, it said that uh, he didn't stress on trying to like perfect anything. He just worked with his tools. Good. He practiced yeah. his digital art, he practiced his drawing, and he came up with his style. Which, like I said, when you look at his art, it's a style. You know, it's a brand. You can totally see that. And this was really yeah. cool. Uh, Inks, I thought this would, this would really speak to you. Uh, I'm going to read this off this uh, piece here. But when Will was asked what inspires him and keeps him motivated to keep drawing, his reply was, I'm not much good at anything else apart from drawing. So a career change isn't really on the cards. But aside from that I feel I have to, uh, I have a real need to do it, I have a lot of half-formed stories in my head that I want to realize. If I don't create something for any length of time, I feel kind of useless. I feel very lucky to be in a position where people pay me to create pictures. That is how everyone in the interwebs feels right now. <laughs> oh man, it's like, <laughs> I want someone to pay me to make hey, pictures. This, is, this will speak to you, Inks. I'm not good at anything but drawing. Um, I feel useless <laughs> if I don't create. <laughs> no, um, I, I I agree. And what you said when that really spoke to me was when he spent time playing. And folks, that is how you get your creativity: is you just play. If if you turn into an art bot, which you know, like again, I'm speaking from experience that that happens to me in the past and all the time, where you become this art bot, this Harry Dresden. printer. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Dresden episode eleven. You listen to that, people, and you know the pain. But if you if you give your <laughs> if you give yourself time to play and just explore, that's when creativity happens. That's when you make sand people in all pink. That's when you make alligator <clears throat> things in a pink background. That's when you make all this fantastic stuff. And you know, no one is safe from having you know. Um, you know, an off day or whatever. Taking a paycheck. But, yeah. <laughs> taking a paycheck. But again, if you have drawers block, um, musicians block, artists block, just fool the fuck around and see what forms out of the farty cloud that is your, um, you the know, pink play farty dungeon. cloud <laughs> with a horrible. Right. Have some fun with it. <laughs> Try what? new things. Uh, what, what, what really changed my art because I, I've struggled with art. And feeling like my pieces are any good for a long time. Preach by the engineer. Finally, it was just like, what the heck? Let's just see what happens. Right. And right. when you do that, when when you stop, when you when you stop uh, chaining yourself to your own uh, perfections or what what you see yourself wanting to do, and you just take yourself as you are, and you start <clears throat> experimenting and trying new things. And that's right. That's that's half of painting right there. Half of yeah. painting or art is conquering fear. Yeah. It's the idea of uh, oh, yes. I'm halfway through this painting. I really like what I've done, but I'm afraid of doing this thing because oh, yeah, I mess absolutely. up what I've done. The fact of the matter is you take that brush, you <laughs> yeah. stick it in the paint, and you slop it on that painting because you can always fix it later. And and it's taking those risks that make your painting awesome. Yep. Yeah, and d and don't censor yourself. Draw chichis, draw nakedness, draw draw weird stuff. Please or draw don't. dongs. Put dongs but, on your warriors. I mean, recently Why do they I told. Have pants? <laughs> I hate pants. Recently, <laughs> I know. <laughs> we got I recently like I was having a conversation with my mama, and I was like, I had told her about the podcast again, and I was like, you know, we're halfway through our season and blah 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 and 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 i had to kind of like break it to her and she's like well where do i listen to and i had that <laughs> Sweet i had that texas sphinct, mama that that sphincter tightening moment of like <laughs> my mama is about to hear me like talk about covers talk about you know talk about titties talk about fartiness talk about all this stuff that you know i would never say in front of my mama yeah. but this is this is our fucking art and we're gonna have to put it out there we're gonna we're gonna have to let you know you twenty people plus my mama hear what we have to say and not be afraid to say it. We love you, Mama Inks. Let, <laughs> let go of that fear, folks. AJ brought us this cover. AJ. AJ brought us on this thread. This could have been you. 
You hear me? Yes. This could have been you that took us on yes. this thread. And it's so cool because... No, this is AJ's glory. This, this is, is AJ's. AJ's. We salute you, Yes. AJ. We salute A you. A conversation about fear, facing it, courage. You did it. Barty Clouds. Inks likes pinks. Inks it's all likes there. pinks. It's all here. It could have been you. Yes. The last thing I will say that's really cool um, that that just jumped off my brain here. Uh, the other thing, uh, I was given. I'm giving uh, Will Sweeney a lot of shit, but you know this guy is no small fry. He's probably no. making a lot of money for his art. He's doing videos. No. He's doing comics. He's doing whatever. And he did some Garage Band cover from 2019. That's pretty cool. These 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 guys are not big. Uh, and so he prop really realistically he probably threw him a bone, you know. So I mean, granted, I don't think his bone was as as good looking as it could have been, but uh, I think it's a cool thing that if you're a big artist, you know, take those breaks and and help out the the, the budgeting the artists out there that just that want your covers, you know. Yeah. In and- addition, in addition to all this, if you are in X Hex or you are uh, Sweeney, uh, tell us a story. Tell us the story of his cover. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we're like the we, eight we're, of you. We're genuinely, <laughs> we're genuinely curious. Call us dicks. I mean, and, and, and truthfully, too, again, artists, if you do, if you have that moment and you say, you know what, that couldn't have been as good as it could have been, fucking don't regret it. Move on to the next cover and learn those lessons and fucking roll over the cover decoders and yeah. stand over our bodies and say, I told you I could do it. There are ones <laughs> with the peace <laughs> in the cloud. Right on the way. Manila Road, folks. Episode something. Yeah. Check it out. Exactly. Great story. But yeah, X Hex yes. or Will Sweeney, if you guys are like, oh yeah, we got a story about that, let us know. Let yeah. us know. Um, That's what it's all about. Uh, all right, folks. So that's our little uh, our little warm up here. Once again, AJ, you have entered the cover hall. Thank you. We yes. uh, are doing one of our favorite segments tonight. We are Ooh, doing. It's Beck. What's in the box? What's in the box? <laughs> I miss our sound clips. Oh yes. <laughs> oh Bookhouse, you hold all the goods. You do. Well, I'm gonna take a. I'm the box driver tonight. I got the sword now. I'm the pan. This is my box. And I'm I'm going to pick I'm going to pick the slide called the named letter X Ooh. in honor of Hex X. Okay. Oh, go. hey, there we go. Hex X. All right, folks. Open up the digital cardboard box. What's inside? Open up the box. Ah! All right. I got oh, Brad Pitt's what's face. In the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? Oh, <laughs> it's Brad Pitt's face. Ooh. Ooh. What is Brengineer, this? Brengineer, is this you? Ghost stories. This has to be Brengineer. This oh, yeah. has to be okay, Brengineer. So let, let me tell you just a I little story forest. real quick. A, you just, a, a real a you just, little story You just here. couldn't so, get enough of episode 12, could you? Yeah. <laughs> so so in, um, in Estacada... Which is a small little uh, little town. Um, let's see, east of here, about thirty minutes. There's a little bookstore, and you can go in there and you can get armfuls of books oh. <laughs> for like five bucks. Oh, the armfuls. I'm talking, yeah, the book nook. Uh, 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 tapes has been there. I mean, it's it's quarter, fifty cents. The most expensive book is like a dollar. It's for a hardback. You can come out. That's how I filled up the book house. Is is the book nook, and um, I was walking walking through the classic <clears> section, <throat> and I see this. Uh, I actually have my copy uh, right here, and Ooh. it's got this awful mint green sort of binding. <laughs> but it says "Collected Ghost Stories." I'm like, huh? And I look at that cover, and I'm like, buddy, you're coming home with me. <laughs> um, I like what I so see. I like what I see, and <laughs> I loved what I read. So what we're looking at here is. The Collected Ghost Stories of M.R. James. Yeah, folks, so if you, if you tuned in... By Classics. By Wadsworth Classics. If you tuned into our last episode, you will know that the Brengineer likes all things autumnal, all things uh, misty, <laughs> and all things mysterious. This cover fits every single one of those criteria. Uh, it's a very it cool cover. It certainly does. It's got, it's got this... Is it, is it snow? It's kind of hard to tell. I think it's snow. Uh, but it's like this it's a little snow it's dust. This like a old road. classic looking road, dusted with snow. There's maybe some carriage tracks, maybe an old buggy from the 1800s or whatever. 
There's uh, these kind of leafless trees, which tells you it's winter right. time. And there's a figure just kind of strolling. He's probably drunk. He probably <laughs> is looking for his house, but he missed oh. it a couple roads back. Uh, I'm not going to. She's not going to tell me where Margaret I can tell you out again. Can't well, I know find the trash my damn cans house. Here somewhere. <laughs> Here, here's how it went, mate. You see, I, I came home after a long day of work. <laughs> oh, that's right. And I, op- and I opened up the door to the cottage. You opened and, it up. And my brother. Your brother. Oh, oh, your baby brother. Your brother. No, your brother. Oh, no, no, he, no, mate. He's playing chase the foxy oh. down the rabbit hole oh, with the fishes. He's playing chase the rabbit oh, down the foxy hole, is he? Oh, you like a fucking fox. Oh, that bad. And she Bernard. chased me out. Bernard. <laughs> so anyways, here, <laughs> so here's Bernard you to take a walk, walking, right? walking down this, uh, this eerie English country road in the just snow. And it's just the such the whole an time. effective cover. It is. Now, here, real quick, um, though, I got to say. Wordsworth Classics put a very, like, classic-looking uh, font on here with little black boxes, and I am not a fan. No, no, that's the worst part. In fact, if you look at my cover here, where it says M.R. James, it's pink. Ooh. Ooh. I, 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 if you un, if you got to unblur no yourself <laughs> so I can see that pink. Let me it's, see that uh, pink. While you're doing that, it, I'm going to say the... the it looks like winter, except for the, like the spicy lime green colors I'm seeing on there. Oh yeah, weird. Oh yeah. Ooh, I kind of like, like your that. cover better. I like, it's I like green your and cover pink. better. Yeah, I, th- I, th- your I think it's a awful, little bit more but, effective. Um, but anyway, um, so what you're looking at here is the work of a very famous uh, Victorian era painter by the name of uh, John Atkinson Grimshaw. Oh, uh, Grimshaw. Most known, oh, yeah. Grimshaw. Most famous for doing his um, nocturnal scenes. So if you move down, we're going to talk. Uh, do a quick little thing about M.R. James. Um, oh, look at him. Look how perfect he is. He was yeah, also, perfect. He was also one of Sherlock Holmes' uh, mortal enemies. Uh, All right. God. Now, <laughs> yeah, so I feel it necessary. <laughs> he's, got, he's got the round Potter glasses <laughs> and the sweep to sight. Oh, I love it. Dude, he is absolutely teaching defense of the dark arts whenever um, the next, you know, professor gets murked. Exactly. Absolutely. He, yeah. he, um, <laughs> he looks like a very stern person. Now, I fear I need to speak of this in uh, a proper British accent. Oh, oh here we go. go. Yes. Get your Montague whiskers out. Road James, born 1862, died oh. in 1936. Renowned oh medievalist and scholar in Britain. He is the creator of the antiquarian ghost story. Quite. He did away with gothic cliches, increasing the more realistic setting for his stories. (laughs) He is the progenitor of the Jameson style. (laughs) 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 Here's the Jameson style. Very good, of course. Jamesian, Um, I should say. Jamesian style. style. Shan't read any other ghost stories. So um, I'm also going to hold up this other thing I found in another bookstore. Simply entitled Abby's. Um, th- this is one of Ooh, my. Like this is one of my prize books, and it happens to be by M. R. James. M. R. James oh, uh, was a scholar of all things old. He he was a wow. diehard uh, um, conservative, and he hated uh, the idea of sort of. I mean, look at this cool book. Oh. Um, he just hated the idea of, of things progressing, and so um, he was one of those very, very staunch, hard, yeah, British. No, I don't drive my carriage more. backwards. I do not yeah. drive forwards. <laughs> I drive backwards in my carriage. I wouldn't be caught dead moving in a forward progression. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. So, uh, what's Jamesian mean? Um, so, James perfected the method of storytelling, which has since become known as Jamesian. Yes. The classic Jamesian tale usually includes the following elements. I like a, to drink that. A on character. A <laughs> oh, I have a little Jameson. Um, a characterful <laughs> setting in an English uh, village, seaside town, or country estate, an ancient town in France, Denmark, or Sweden, or a venerable abbey or university. So there's all. It's always some sort of um, ancient uh, European area. Dude, this is your as, style. This is my this is style. Your stuff. Right. Where, where it takes place. Misty medieval towns in Denmark. That's right. Um, the, the main character is usually a nondescript and rather naive gentleman scholar as protagonist. Um, oh. So I feel like maybe um, 
Mr. James is writing himself into his uh, own stories a little bit, um, minus the naive part, probably. So wait, and then real, uh, real quick, Brent Engineer, is this is the James yeah. is J- James Ian? Is that yeah. something he created, or is this an actual style? So yeah, this this style came out of his work. Oh wow! So this guy's a progenitor, he, dude. This we need this to make guy our own styles. This guy reinvented the ghost story. He did away with the idea of castles and and that kind of stuff, uh, and, and you know, castles in the past, that whole gothic idea, and he brought it down into sort of normal English life. Dude, that's where- amazing. <laughs> This ghost oh, okay. doesn't need to come out of a giant crazy tomb. It could just come out of uh, a local well. Could just be You're like not chilling in your one refrigerator, who can have ghosts, drinking Vincent all Price. your milk. Exactly. Yeah. Or your grandmother's attic. There was a ghost in your grandmother's attic. And, oh. and the idea is it brought that terror close to home and right. stuff in some distant romantic castle. It's not just um, for counts anymore. Exactly. So the third... Um, the third uh, part of uh, Jamesian of the Jamesian style is the discovery of an old book or other antiquarian antiquarian object that somehow unlocks, calls down the wrath, or at least attracts the unwelcome attention of a supernatural okay. menace. This is um, beyond, dude. This is so amazing. Great. So this um, is this is this is just eggplant material for, so for that's right. engineer. It's got to be in a cold place. Ding. It has to be Spooky um, Manor. a naive, Ding. naive gentleman, <laughs> and it has to have a cummy object. That is. That's right. That's us. That's right. <laughs> so now, if you um, if you didn't notice uh, last time, I did the figure in the shadows. Oh, and, that's uh, that's Jamesy and, and up the, this the farthest <laughs> yeah. corner of the northern uh, alley. That's right. John Belair's um, fiction is all Jamesian. Completely. Every single one. There's always, you know, it's always the quaint little, uh, you know, American village, you know, not quite, you know, England, but, you know, similar small town setting. Um, it's got your uh, naive little kid who lives with, you know, his scholarly uncle. Same thing. And there's always some sort of artifact that they dig up that gets them in trouble. Dude, this so is all, so cool. This, like, unearthed so much. So this, so would, it, would this have inspired, uh, like, lots of the... I, not modern, but I guess like classic oh, definitely horror the stories so that we know of today. So, yeah, so let's go next. So the, uh, this guy influenced Lovecraft, Ramsey Campbell, oh, Stephen ding, King, ding. Clark Ashton Smith, ding. and tons more. The list the list goes on. Um, oh. The funny thing about James is he just was doing the ghost stories for fun. Um, it's what he's best known for, but it wasn't his biggest interest. And he wrote 30 or so stories and never wrote any more. And that was it. How many times do you hear that where an artist said, oh, I was doing my thing, but I did this other thing for fun. And next thing you know, I have my own style. You know, pretty much do things much that, that so make nice. you happy. Yeah. Your audience will find you. So exactly. just, just real quick, we've said it a bunch of times, but I just want to state for, for, for the listeners this guy, he did the painting, and he did the stories. No, 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 no. Uh, he did not do the painting on the cover. Okay. We're just talking. We're just talking about the book. I felt like. Okay. I felt like um, they're kindred spirits in a way. These these two guys, but um, great. It's an M.R. James book. I wanted to talk about the author. So now, no, if that's we great. Continue so on, the, but they they kind of play off each other because they they are totally influenced off one another. Same style. Oh, Master eh, Grimshaw. They're, they're more contemporaries. They're kind of alive in the same period. Um, I, James Moore in the latter latter part, latter part half of the Victorian era, where John Atkinson Grimshaw uh, Shaw was, um, you know, more towards the beginning of the Victorian era and then died before the turn of the century. <laughs> okay, Brengineer, real quick before we continue, if who would you cast... Um, the <laughs> James as MR James. Who are you casting as MR James? Um, let's see. Who am I casting as MR James? You know Brian Cox. Okay. Oh, great okay. pick. Great Brian pick. Cox. Okay. Now who are you who are you casting John Atkinson Grimshaw as? Um, I am picking Guy oh, Pierce. You know what? Guy Pierce. No. 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 This is um Rowan Atkinson all the way. <laughs> Look at this guy. <laughs> I thought you Rowan Atkinson. Pick, but Rowan Atkinson. Okay, Ooh. so we got we've got Ryan Ak- Atkinson and 
uh, who'd you say before? Cox. Uh, Brian Brian Cox. Okay, cool. Just so go. you so so you folks out here when when they make the documentary on this uh, these two, you, you know who we're casting. The docum video is that who we got? The, the doc documentary. Damn it! <laughs> damn it! <laughs> Now, uh, moving down, you can see I, I went ahead and I Whoa. put another image of the cover up and a close up. Look at that, dude! Um, that's without the, the filter. Yeah. They filtered the it. Texture. They filtered it again. Look at the full oh, yeah. color. Oh, yeah. dude! They did the that, torchlight that, so, thing. While you're taking that image in, I'm going to read a bit about um, Grimshaw here. Um, so he's a Victorian era painter known for his nocturnal scenes. Uh, he painted in oil. Once again, uh, Victorian era. I mean, there Folks, weren't a this whole is lot of options, but um, uh, uh, oil. He is known as one of the great painters of the Victorian era. Now, um, essentially, um, he did the classic Victorian thing. He um, disappointed his parents by uh, becoming a painter and married his cousin. So, um, there you go. You're never, never going to be a painter if you marry a cousin. <laughs> look, look, Papa, I, I, I just feel a calling that if I, if I'm not very good at anything else but creating, and if I don't create, I don't have a purpose. <laughs> also, Mary Ann's looking really good today. <laughs> now, I will add, it was pretty common to marry your cousin uh, back in those times. Hell yes. Yeah. Uh, Another yeah. famous um, <laughs> cousin marrier was Edgar Allan Poe, I believe, if, I, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken. So. Oh, yeah. also, also, um, what's his name? Until the, they uh, die, Darwin. You marry your war, Darwin. Right? Maybe you've heard of him. Real quick, um, this came up on a on a past episode when uh, acrylics were invented, and so I looked it up. They weren't invented to like they weren't even like thought of until like the 1950s, and really got going in the 1960s. Oh, so you had to so, oil it up. Yeah. Yeah, so anything before that is going to be um, is going to be your your oils, even watercolor and gouache, but not so far back. So yeah, yeah if it ain't if you ain't past nineteen fifty, you're it's not using oilies. Yeah. You know, really cool about this, folks, is um, if you check out uh, episode ten, uh, I brought up Eugene Kruger, and this is just like this is hubba bubba. This is three hours of foreplay juicy. All right, this thing is <laughs> moist, it is wet, it is beautiful. Oh. This is the kind of classic, classical era painting I yeah. love. I don't you like the... the romantic splotches. This is just like, this just is amazing. You wait. Just you wait. There is a whole uh, lot more oh, of uh, this to come. Oh, I was super happy more. that I can now zoom in to the figure that's walking down the road. We thought yep. it was Bernard. Now I can see that it, it's it's probably an old woman. She's she's got like a weird squat going on, she but she's got good form, good form because she's got her feet shoulder length apart. Ah, uh, she's got so a little bag over her over in the in the crux of her elbow there. Right. But yeah, she just right. she just stole Lord uh, Disney's cans. Yeah, what is going on that here? That bastard won't be needing <laughs> his milk money. You son of a yeah, bitch. Yeah, cans. <laughs> that bastard, I'll show him. So Grim, Grimshaw, um, early on, was a painter <laughs> in the pre-Raphaelites style. So there was what? the pre-Raphaelites Brotherhood, it turns out. And this was a group of artists, of, uh, of painters and poets. Um, Occultists. Who basically, <laughs> right? So they were kind of um, <laughs> rejecting the current styles of art and wanted to go to a pre-Raphael time, um, and that was more focused on realism. And so um, he was of that style early on. They focused on extreme detail, um, color, and um, a lot of critics uh, called the style ugly and jarring to the eye. Because so I guess at that point, what? Um, too much detail and realism is ugly and jarring to the eye. So it's very interesting if you go through all the different eras of painting, um, there's always some sort of critic. There's always some critic. not real enough, or or too real, <laughs> or uh, yeah. it, it all looks cool to me. Anyway, so Grimshaw uh, so went full punk. He rejected his parents. He married his cousin. He joined he a became cult. A painter. He, he became <laughs> the the wrong kind of painter. He shaved his head. <laughs> so yeah, he wasn't a member of that brotherhood necessarily, but he was he he painted in that style. 
So, um, actually, Grimshaw's accuracy of detail and realism was criticized uh, by some of his contemporaries um, because his paintings <laughs> appear to be, uh, and this is the words of a critic, uh, appear to show no marks or handling of brushwork. Uh, and That's not what happens when doubtful. you worship Satan. You get the power <laughs> to... <laughs> to... <laughs> <laughs> You Obviously, just, you can tell by his brushstrokes <laughs> that he is in league with Satan. With Satan. <laughs> Call the Inquisition. Oh. <laughs> it's just so the, one child. The critic, added, the critic added to that, saying not a few artists were doubtful whether they could be accepted as paintings at all. So that's Ooh. the type of painting painter he was. He, Howie. His paintings were so pristine and thought out and detailed that you couldn't even find the brushstrokes. That's what we're talking about with this guy. Um, so... Later on, he died of tuberculosis. Ooh. He left behind no journals or letters or anything to kind of help us understand him better. Um, he lived well above his means uh, in a rented mansion by the sea. Yes! Um, where yes. he moved nice. to um, uh, focus on his paintings. He even, to his wife's dismay, um, had his favorite model uh, go and move into the mansion. So yeah. that they could uh, the do other a different cousin. kind of painting. <laughs> Dude, this guy is That's like, just conjecture. This is I don't the know. bad boy of the... Of the <laughs> <He is>. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, in his lifetime, he didn't really see success. Um, he didn't really see the fame he wanted. It wasn't until the 50s and then... Um, and, and 60s and, and so on that he finally got the fame that he deserved and now he's known as the... We one of the greatest Victorian painters. You can look, if you go to the next slide, you can see... Oh, um, oh yeah. sweet soupy soul patches. That green fucking so, sky. Look at that so, second well, on, slide. But, but um, you said 50s. Is this 1950s or did, are we still talking like 1850s? No, no. So this here, his, his work uh, was... His great period, I guess, was in the uh, 1870s. 1870s oh, okay. was okay, was okay. his prime point. I think that's when he moved to the coast and started doing all his really famous nocturnal scenes. Um, it wasn't until the 1950s that uh, long after he had died, or I guess 20 or so years after he had died, that he, he started to um, that his work started to gain the notice that it deserved. Friends, uh, I am completely blown away right now. That's that second slide with the moon is probably yeah, one of yeah. the most incredible. I mean, that, he paints night you, perfectly. If this is in the public domain, dungeon sensors so are going to pounce on this. You, if you, you guys are listening, on it and you do not filter it. You <laughs> type this guy in, and once again, it's got uh, old lady uh, Grathilda there stealing oh, more milk jars. She's back. Oh Look at her. <laughs> She's back. Look at her. Oh my god, I didn't notice that. Look at. I'll show you, you god. Jeff kicking me off your lawn for stealing your Grinshaw, pheasants. Grinshaw, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Dude, this so, is incredible. Yeah, Look at his, the lighting. His work, is, his work is characterized by real wet, drippy atmospheres, <laughs> fog, gas lamps, luminous <laughs> moons. Um, it's very heavy. It's very ominous in a way. Uh, if you go down to the next one, he's got his beautiful mansion scene. His trees are always devoid of leaves. Um, there is a uh, heavy silhouette. Um, the figures are always, oh, uh, oh, they man. seem distant with their heads down. You can tell their clothes are saturated. Perhaps they're somewhat miserable. Is that Grathilda how, again? How has this last slide not been used for an album? I, I, Th I don't this, know. Is this public domain? You can't uh, use this it. Point, I don't know yeah. who you are, Lord, Lord, yeah. Lord, uh, Lord Orcus. You can't have it. This is our so, dungeon synth cover. No, my favorite no, one. I my am favorite the keeper one. of Grinshaw's estate, and I will make sure that <laughs> Grithilda's good name does not be tarnished by you forty cover decoders <laughs> in your dungeon synth. So lastly, we have this beautiful image, and this is kind of, I think, when he got out of doing his fantasy stuff, because he went through a fantasy stage where he was drawing fairies um, and things like that. And so here you have this a wonderful boat with this dragon sort of uh, headpiece. Um, and That's a nice boat. Po possibly a dragon. dead woman. Um, and then there's a, uh, a guy in a mask kind of steering the boat, and it's this very uh, mythical, beautiful, very brown sort of image but heavy it's with atmosphere fantastic. it's fantastic yeah, it's, it's, it's it's definitely getting into that romantic high fantasy but this that the was kind of popular around that time 
Yeah, this has was. this has its own style though. This still has his dark style. Uh, lots of the stuff you see in that period all looks very much the same. This is this is this is claw. This is claw material right here. This, this is, is this has edge. This, is made this for has the claw. that. This has that. Marry your cousin. Join a cult. Die of tuberculosis. Edge to it. That's right. This, this would be in the Bringenerian style. Oh, uh, yeah. collection. This the is Brengenerian. We're, we're sure. going to start a new style, and we're going to coin it right now. If it's got, if it's got weight, if it's got cold, if it's got trees, if it's got a Grathilda of some sort, <laughs> it's Brengenerian. And if it's attached to an Mr. James book cover, there you go. There you go, folks. The power of covers. Did you know any of this before you looked this up, Brengenier? No, no. I, I mean, I knew, I knew Incredible. of Grimshaw because um, I've had this for a while. I, I've seen his images online, but I never really looked into him. So, like today, I, I did a little more research. I watched some. Doc- There's a few documentaries uh, you can watch about him. Um, Ooh, but, where at? But for just on YouTube. But for Docos. as famous as famous a guy, uh, as famous a, 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 a guy he is in his in his work, his body of work, um, you just don't hear about him. You know, everyone's still obsessed with, you know, uh, Michelangelo and Monet and, you know, on yeah, and Screw on and those on. guys. Screw your Grimshaw. people with, with bird wings. I want more you know, Grimshaw. You're never going to be a Michelangelo. You're never going to be a Michelangelo. <laughs> just give up. Marry your cousin instead. <laughs> oh, no. Well, no. So I, there we are. Folks, I Grimshaw am. Grimshaw and Nocturnal Darkness. Yeah, Grimshaw. I am blown away. We salute you and get ready for your public domain to be pilfered by the dungeon oh, centers all over. and black metalers uh, around the world. Yeah, get on there, slap your crappy logo on there, and and put a filter on because they are amazing. And make, make sure you stretch it out too. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Oh well, thank you, Brengineer. That was amazing. Absolutely enlightening. I am so glad you found that. Um, I will be checking that out more. Uh, uh, inks, I believe it's time to open the flaps of our digital cardboard box. Okay. Um, what's the uh, bag? What's the bag? The bag. See? What's the bag? Okay, so you mentioned the flaps. Since you said flaps, I'm going to go with slide F. Ooh, F for is for goodness. flappies. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> go on in the flaps. box. What do you find? Some kind of cover of another cool, and it kind. You my find mind. the old Ooh. Babe Ruth. Rude. <laughs> what the All right, fuck folks. is this? Yep, here we First go. First base. Drink Bay it in. Ruth. Drink what her in. What the fuck am I looking at? This is like space ball. <laughs> it? It's like wait, all right, space ball fans. We're back here. It's a lovely is, nebula today. Oh, what um, is Earth? <laughs> This is scuba is this? space. Do- this isn't even regular space ball. They've got like scuba gear on. Is it under the? He's riding a shark. <laughs> you- <laughs> oh, <that> dude! <laughs> oh, he oh, is. Man. He's surfing. He's surfing on a shark. Shark surf. What on uh, earth? Tell so, us. You know, so, so one of you, one of you, you guys take it away. Take it away and and tell me what you're looking at. All right, I'm gonna go for this one. We've got <laughs> bright neon characters. Um, first, it's the background is obviously space. We've got speckles of stars. Right in the middle is classic video game type saying Babe Ruth. You've got an bright orange <clears throat> atomic batter swinging away as a shark surfing um, turquoise. Obviously, on the other team, character is f- gently. <laughs> I know he's supposed to be throwing the ball, but the ball is like floating as the 2001 Space Odyssey music plays. And the ball and is Earth, just so you know. Yeah, and, and then the, the, the catcher is... I'm not sure what he's doing. He He's <laughs> he's not behind the batter, but um, he's doing um, some anime hands. He doesn't have gloves. They don't the have guy gloves in the in background space. is obviously like, oh, shit, I'm falling. Yeah. Like falling yeah, off a yeah, shark exactly. into deep space. Or, yeah, or he's doing, the, he's doing the jazz hands. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> in... <laughs> also, in space, don't you, no one don't can you get throw you the out. baseball at like the bat and not at someone's foot or their ass? Yeah, looks like he's trying to peg him in the butthole. These, these <laughs> 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 rules do not apply in space when it comes to baseball. I don't know what this in is. In space, folks, no one can hear you pitch. 
I would pick it up. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, folks, uh, this, this is this guy. <laughs> real, real quick. This guy, uh, this batter, is clearly rotoscoped. The 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 artist. I don't know who the artist is yet, but I can tell by looking at it. The the guy got his model friend over, and he's like, "Hey, Garth, go ahead and take this uh the stick Put here. Put this suit on." And I Garth you... never swung a bat in his life. That's right. Just put yeah. this suit on and uh, this cool, like, Mad Max coat. And uh, those dad jeans, those are those are great. And uh, Get those click, galoshes got out, it. bro. And then uh, rotoscope time. Looks like he's That's wearing the happened. Doom Guy helmet. Yeah, so, uh, folks, if you, can't, if you can't tell from our amazing critique, this is a weird... <laughs> this is a weird piece of art. Uh, everyone is, like, especially the batter, it's so awkwardly placed like the way he's standing is really weird the whole it's not very well arranged the lettering is uh, the lettering my is guess bad. is video game cover i don't know what the cover this is too but i'm guessing some sort of like atari pump out game well about let me, baseball let me space. fill you guys in i'm gonna take you guys on a, on a journey here because folks uh I, w- I was telling the tape mistress sometimes you question the validity of a project you're doing you're like why the fuck am i doing this is this we're doing a project <laughs> about covers of things is this a good idea and then i literally spent probably two hours or more yes going on an amazing wormhole because of this cover so that's I what this- that's what's in the box is all about what's in the box is the miscellaneous pile that that will explode in our faces once we reach in. Absolutely. So let me give you the story on this. This uh, this cover I actually knew of beforehand. It's one that pops into my mind occasionally. And if you see the cover, you will always remember it. (laughs) It's so bad, it's good, kind of. Um, But I used to, at work, I used to um, listen to a lot of albums on YouTube. And I would just pick a year uh, and I would just listen to albums. So um, this album is a 1972 prog rock album. Uh, Babe Ruth <laughs> is the band. First bass is the name of the album. Uh, oh. Prog rock, if you guys are not familiar with, is uh, progressive rock. Uh, it evolved in the 60s. It started as psychedelic rock, basically. Um, and then it really took root in the 70s, becoming prog rock. And it kind of peaked during the 80s. And basically, uh, prog rock was the attempt of, of rock artists to make rock music more uh, artistic, basically. More layers, playing with different instrumentation, adding time different... Time signatures. Time signatures. Also, and you have so many crazy bands. You guys absolutely have heard one. Um, uh, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, King Crimson, Yes, uh, Pink Floyd. Oh, yeah. All of these guys are prog rock bands. Um, this was a fairly successful album. Uh, this was, I believe, their first album. Yep, this was their first album. Um, and it did pretty well. It had a couple tracks off of it that did uh, very well. Uh, the Mexican was the most famous. Um, I've never even heard of this. Yeah, I've well, never even seen this cover before. You're, you're going to listen to it after this. So the Mexican well, was yeah, their I most am. famous <laughs> track. Uh, and nice. King, they did a, there's a couple covers. One of the most famous covers on this is uh, King Kong which was a Frank Zappa song off the album Uncle Meat. Uh, yeah, so a fairly a fairly <laughs> successful album, probably, oh yeah, Frank Zappa, that's a whole other episode. But there is something about this album and all good prog rock bands. If you were a prog rock band in the 70s, there is one thing that you had to have. And what you had to have, ladies and gentlemen, was a Roger Dean cover. Oh my boy, Roger! D- is this Roger, Roger Dean? Dean? This is Roger Dean. No, this is the man, no! Roger, Roger Dean. Yeah, no, he, that's he, impossible. He, he will I'm swing hanging himself. off of the side of Cloud City right now, denying <laughs> it. Roger, I no. was so excited about this because I knew Inks was a huge Roger no. Dean fan. It's part of his childhood, and now he gets to look at the no, incestuous. No. The incestuous bubonic creature coming out of Roger's basement saying, I am his child. Look at me. Oh, yeah. Oh, so let me God. let me give you. Damn it. I'm, I'm not when I'm here because we <laughs> want to talk about the covers. I'm not going to do a huge bit on Roger Dean. Part of the reason it took so long is because 
folks, there is so much information on Roger Dean. Roger Dean has done so much, so much work. His catalog is huge. He is an episode. He will be a legacy. I'm going to give you a very Absolutely. brief overview. So uh, Roger Dean, uh, again, like you said, he's a pretty famous artist. Uh, as a he was a military kid, which again, Mercer Mayer, Brom, all these different guys that are these famous artists. They travel around. They see weird shit as kids. They become famous artists. So, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah, and it's like they're trying to, um, you know, get back at overbearing military dads. Yeah, exactly. You yeah, know. it's the whole it's the whole painter guy syndrome. Roger I, Dean I didn't marry his cousin. We, we got, a, we got a theme going on this tonight. <laughs> we had Grinshaw rebelling against his parents. Roger Dean, you there know, you go. growing so, his hair out. Roger Dean, uh, he was greatly influenced by landscape paintings in China and Hong Kong specifically. Uh, as a yeah. child, that is what really drove his style. You can easily see that um, in his works. So uh, I found a couple of really cool articles. I'm going to go ahead and link those in, but uh, this is from one of those. Um, though he primarily works with watercolor paints, many of his paintings use multiple media, including uh, gouache, ink, enamel, crayon, and collage. Uh, in addition to his cover paintings, Dean Clear? is respected for his uh, cal calligraphic work, which is logos and whatnot, titles that go with his art. Uh, I didn't realize um, the band Yes, again, that's a later episode, but he actually designed their sets. He designed lots of their shows, videos. This guy did sculptures. Roger Dean oh has done everything. He is an amazing oh artist, uh, and he's very talented, which is why this Babe Ruth cover is very interesting. Um, and like Brett so said, which is kind of cool, uh, it does look like there is a rotoscope piece in there. I'm going to say that it's still watercolor, but it, it is probably mixed media uh, in there. Um, so here's what's kind of cool uh, about this whole thing. This is Roger Dean, right? This is the Dean. This is well, his, yeah. I, think, I think maybe his like 10th major, major album piece. Um, let's go ahead and look at slide two. Okay. Slide two, so awesome. guys, this is yeah. his first piece. This was what? done in 68. This doesn't even look like his work. This was, no, I, I... this was 68. Babe Ruth was 72. So Dude, this is wild. I, yeah. I like this better. Like I love, of course you like this better. This looks amazing. This is I, incredible. I love just not even the characters. Like, I mean, so what we're looking at, folks, is we're looking at like it, maybe maybe it's hell, but it's just this um, this flaming, fiery, smoky background with these bizarre demonic creatures all just swarming mm. over them. There's like a giant kind of fat looking one. Is that like a snake coming at him or some sort of yeah, yeah. loop like of intestine or something? And there's this cool flying green creature. Yeah. So this is for yeah, the album, so, uh, album Gun. Yeah, this is a great album. Again, uh, great so album. This, was, this was his first cover uh, for uh, 1968, the, the band Gun. Um, what's cool about this is he had just gotten his first job uh, in a studio. And, uh, and they, they went in and they saw this piece. And they're like, yeah, we'll take that. Five, five, five thousand quid Boom. or whatever the, the payment is and that was that I was love it. it like it pack yep. it up we're gonna um, use it for gun and i right, guess he said thanks, when Roger. he did gun he said the space he was working in was very uh it was very like tight and, and conventional and he wanted something to oh, kind of emanate yeah. the chaos uh to kind of offset the environment he was supposed to be working in roger dean again folks go on youtube there are tons of documentaries he does he'll do he does art lessons he does all sorts of stuff but one of the things, if you listen to him, he's very into, like, how things feel and, like, um, you know, the emotions of pieces and uh, kind of the feng shui of how things are. So you hear him talk a lot about, like, the spirit of a painting and, and all this kind of, you know, psychedelic mumbo-jumbo. But Mumbo-jumbo. The, yeah, they're he, all very surreal. Yeah, you can see it in the, his in his, in his his work that he believes, he believes in the spiritual process of, of creation, which is, which is really yeah. cool, but it blows me away. So this was his first piece, right? This is 68. Go to the next slide. Uh, the next slide is off a band. This called is everything. This yeah. is everything. <laughs> this is, this is Brengineer's 
brain, except there needs to be a haunted house in the background over here. Yeah, there's is, no haunted house. There's no and, haunted and house, but this is... There's this, not this, enough uh, leafless trees. This is... So but this, this band is, is called... Unbelievable. Bill, this band is called the Bill Cox Nitro Function. This is from 1971. So this is just a... Bill Cox Nitro Function. I'm yeah. pretty sure I went to a monster truck rally <laughs> named the same thing. <laughs> Back to the Bill Cox Nitro Function. We got one good working engine on here tonight, but you're going to enjoy it thoroughly. Here, as here comes the Skull Crusher. The Skull Crusher is coming up here. He's going to go right over the, uh, the school bus here. Show. I, have, uh, I have not listened to this album, but oh. I wanted to bring it up as reference. This is 1971. So this is only three years after the next year. The next year after Bill Cox's monster truck rally, we got Babe Ruth. <laughs> so Yeah, I don't know what happened with Babe Ruth. I tried so hard. I tried so hard to find out why this painting is so shitty. Uh, and I could not find anything. I did find an article that was kind of fun. And the only thing that the person said when they got to this piece was Roger Dean clearly didn't know anything about baseball and clearly did not give a shit about baseball. And I think going off of that, I think the band, first of all, like like they said in that article, the band is called Babe Ruth, and the album is called First Base. So it has to be about baseball. You're not going to be able to put some yeah. fantasy landscape. It has to be about baseball, but Roger Dean wants to paint people on sharks. Right, you're, you're right. It does, it totally looks like you you hired an alien... Um, to to and describe baseball <laughs> to that alien, and the alien was like, mm, "Well, I think I will that do my probably best. boots would be really useful for." Um, I think and, we got. And, and uh, now X, that I know X, that it's Roger Dean, I'm gonna totally try and defend it because uh, <laughs> no, but he doesn't do characters a lot in his paintings. He does mostly these big landscapes, and if there is a character in it, they're quite small. Yes. So that this that that is strange, first of all, but it. I mean, it still has that surreal feel, and uh, again, it, it totally looks like an alien's version or a to total foreign um, understanding of baseball. It's it's like Power Rangers. You know what? You um, know what, Inks? Now that you bring that up, this is really cool because that just made me think. This is totally a step inside Roger Dean's brain because it is totally that camel right. thing where someone's like, "Yeah, we want a baseball cover," and he's like, "Uh, uh baseball." baseball? Okay, um, and he's sitting there, and he uh, doesn't. Baseball is not in his brain. Is, Fantasy is landscapes sort of, are in his brain. Is that like and this is what crickets. happens when an artist, because if you guys look at the slides Dude. leading up to it, they're incredible. They this are incredible. And this is what happens when when you take an artist and try to put them in a space that they're they don't know, and it either comes yeah. out great or it turns out like this. Yeah, I think it, I think this is X hex uh, syndrome here. Like, th this is uh, this is so not. I I feel like this is a paycheck. I don't know, man. I, I, look at the I other covers. Of, this all his covers before and after this are are pretty amazing. Some of his I some know. of his most famous covers are in this time period. Yeah, and, tapes and th is, these are all tapes amazing. And then you get to Babe Ruth, and it's just like, what the heck? This isn't nearly as good as any of the other right. stuff that's going on. It's a huge roadblock. I, I, I might X, kind of agree X, with X tapes syndrome. on like if you've ever looked at those like Victoria <laughs> official name <laughs> if you've official ever name. At, um, um, if you ever <laughs> if you ever look at like Victorian pictures of animals that people were trying to draw that were being described to them, you know, um, Sir, Sir Royal Cheese Shackleton <laughs> comes back from, you know, these islands and he's like, I've, I saw this large swimming animal and it had these these horns protruding from its gums, you see, and it was very whiskery all over. It was very large and it made this this weird noise, very flopping, but in the, it was very good swimmer. <laughs> and then, like, someone tried to translate that. Go look at a picture of a walrus that was, was um, drawn, you know, Oh, um, back hilarious. in the day, by someone going just purely off of description, and it, and it and it's it's bizarre and hideous. And I think Tate's hit it on the nail that you're describing the uh, baseball animal um, to a person who's never left um, the the small fishing village in which he lives. You know, the I think the funniest part of this too is you know that he absolutely did not want to draw a baseball diamond, so he just said fuck no. it and made it black. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be in a 
Space. Space Bowl. So that's much more interesting. Here's here's the here's the thing that is really fascinating about this. And here's the thing that covers do, folks, is because covers, they they don't just lead you to facts about art and covers. They take you in other stories about the material you're 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 reading about. I found a story about this band, First Base, that is incredible. Okay? So so here's the thing. First Base, the song The Mexican, right, is was arguably their biggest track. Uh, kind of a cool thing about it, the, the, the music plays off a melody um, that Ennio Morricone created for, uh, oh. I believe, a fistful of dollars. Uh, mm. Yeah, or sorry, a few dollars more. Yeah, so, yeah, it takes off of that, and it's just this really cool jam um, with these really cool lyrics. It's about uh, Santa Ana, um, which I'm not super familiar on the story there, but there you go. Some, something to Santa do with Ana Mexican history. Santa Ana went down to Georgia. He was looking for um, uh, Here's what's steel. cool. This song is fundamentally incredibly important to early hip-hop. What? Yes. This song is one of the building blocks of the hip hop movement. Uh, so, so here we go. So I, I found a, there's a lot, quite a bit of information, um, but I found a really cool article. I'll, I'll link that in from this website called College Hip Hop. So this song, The Mexican, right, that Babe Ruth did uh, has, been ex- has been sampled and used by so many early hip hop artists, uh, as well as current ones too. In fact, uh, fairly recently, uh, the Jizza did a cover of it with Tom Morello. Yeah, the Jizza Wu Tang. Wu Tang was very influenced by this song. Something I didn't Ew. I learned too from this. I didn't realize that the Jizza and the Rizza were cousins. I mean, I guess oh, yeah. it makes yeah, sense. Yeah, oh, yeah. oh um, we can talk about it. This is so, <laughs> folks. This is why I was so excited about this because I was telling <laughs> Inks. I, te- I I texted him. I was like. I found a gateway Dude. episode because he's been wanting to do a hip hop episode Wu-Tang. for a long time. Uh, yep, this is where it goes, folks. What was that? This is the where three covers degrees go. of separation or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So this is All where we covers need is lead Frazetta us. to show up. Yep. So here, let me. So let me give you the story on this real quick. So Alan uh, Shacklock is the one who's responsible for making the song. Um, after the band departed, later he became uh, the audio technology department chair of SAE Institute in Nashville. Um, And he, of course, is very familiar with all this stuff because it's his song. I guess uh, he's got two kids who are both DJs. uh, And they're the ones who actually informed their dad about what was going on here. Um, So yeah, uh, as I was saying, uh, the Bombers were a funk group. They did a cover of the song. Uh, Then an artist from... I don't remember, somewhere in South, uh, South America. Uh, his name was Jellybean Benitez in, eight, in 1984. <laughs> yeah, Jellybean Benitez. Great Again, name. Again, go, go out and get yourself a good nickname. Absolutely. He did like an electro freestyle cover, uh, cool. and then that went on to be sampled by people like Cool Herc, African Bombada, oh, and Grandmaster yeah. Flash, who, wow. if you guys are not familiar with... They the basically origins. created hip hop. They are the life's blood of hip hop. Oh, and this song was one of the first songs, amongst others, that was used to influence this the style of, wow. of uh, breakdance, of hip hop, and of rap as we know it. And it all came from this song, The Mexican. Um, if or, you guys want uh, some good helped. information on early hip hop, you can, uh, there's a f- uh, series on Netflix. Hip hop evolution. They're currently doing southern hip hop right now, but um, their information on the origins of hip hop are solid. Absolutely, and in fact, there's a quote in, uh, in that article again. Uh, College yeah. hip hop is the website. I'm going to put that link in here. But this is actually a quote from Grandmaster Flash from The Adventures of Grandmaster Flash: My Life, My Beats, 2008, which I think is a book he did. Um, but this <laughs> yeah, is his he quote. Did. <laughs> he did a book. Great. Have you read it? I, I have not, but I've, I've heard it referenced quite a bit. But My oh, Life, amazing. My Beats. Yeah. My Life, My very Beats. Important, so this- very important not to steal from uh, from from hip hop, or especially early ones who don't have, you know, money for lawyers <laughs> and so, are still living in the projects. These are, these are his words, all right? This is from that book. 
I heard DJ Cool Herc before I ever saw him. I was two full blocks from the park jam, and it was only an hour into the night. But already it was loud, really fucking loud. I could name the tune that he was playing. It was the Mexican by Babe Ruth, and it was thundering. Guys, this is amazing. How crazy is this that, I mean, that you go from looking at a cover that is a prog rock cover that has should have nothing, absolutely nothing to do with hip hop, and then the, just the paths that it leads you on, the, the connections that God. things make. It's all connected. Art is all connected, folks. Um, and it was just super cool to see that this album that no one knows, no one knows Babe no Ruth, one knows. no one knows that Roger no. Dean, that this is the skid mark in Roger Dean's pants, but a song, <laughs> a song. Wal- Roger Dean's walrus. Yeah, a song from this album was one of one of the first songs probably Progenitors. to be sampled in, yeah. in early hip hop. And in fact, if you go on Discogs, um, they have a really cool uh, a really cool spot where you can see all the samples that this song, all the songs that this song has been sampled in. And it, there's a bunch of them. It's amazing. So really, oh, cool. really fascinating. Really cool. There you go, Inks. You have the gateway. Damn. To the hip hop. I have the gateway to hip hop, so I'm going to bring you to slide K then, because speaking of all things being related. Oh, no. We're going to pull up. (laughs) Wait, are we we opening another box? Oh, yeah. I reached right back into the box so fast and so hard because my cover is linking. Oh, no way. Right along with. (laughs) Right along. Uh, We we did not plan this, folks. Boom, I will. I, I boom, bring you boom, boom, nucleus boom, 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 jam boom, on revenge. Jam on it. Jam on it. it. Oh, yeah. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Talk about early days of hip hop. I bring you jam on uh, revenge by nucleus, and I remember looking up this Amazing. album because this song, this the jam on song, is iconic. It is iconic. Breakdancing music. It is iconic battle music from the early days of hip hop. You know, you've got Looking for the Perfect Beat by Africa Bombada. And then um, this is going to come up anytime you hear like early hip hop breakdance music. It is, it is, it is, it is iconic and awful and wonderful all at the same time, just like this cover. When I pulled up the cover, I couldn't believe it. This, yeah, this cover is looks like straight out of Saturday morning, 19. 19- 84 you're eating your 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 lucky charms your fruit loops whatever oh, sugar yeah. box um you happen you to got your neon you green the short pants yeah. on and and you just got done watching the three hour block of uh thundercats and uh <laughs> oh, i'm not right now <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> And uh you would not be surprised if this was a cartoon but it's not a cartoon it is an album and it is Album artwork by Bob Camp. Uncle Uncle Tory, what, what's Bob Uncle Tory doing here? Oh yeah, <laughs> Uncle, you know I can really. Yeah. This guy is totally an Uncle Tory. I, I have a taste for the beats, ladies and gentlemen. I, I can really, I can really move. <laughs> right, like, like what? Maybe, maybe it's like finding like because, like, with Kenny Rogers, I have a tendency to pull up these uh, stepdad types. That are just, you know, they just, gosh, they just really want to do their art and, uh, you know, yeah, do what they can to, to help the youth. Guys, uh, I got soft, sensitive eyes. Soft, sensitive eyes. Soft, sensitive <laughs> eyes. Dude, again, the again, the, again, the correlations. We have two polar opposites here. And right. just, just like you got, you know, Babe Ruth and you got hip hop. So amazing. I cannot wait. <laughs> Dive into yeah. that hole, Inks. Okay, so... I got 1984's Jam on Revenge, uh, artwork done by Bob Camp. Bob Camp, if you don't know, uh, was a co-founder of Spumco, and uh, that that animation Spumco. studio gave birth to Ren and Stimpy. Um, oh, Bob Camp wow. worked as art director on Ren, Ren and Stimpy, yeah. And um, I Did wasn't really much the, into Ren uh, and Stimpy. I haven't, watched, I haven't really watched any Ren and Stimpy. No. But I will tell you that Bob had uh, worked on uh, Thundercats. He yes! worked on <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. He had, he had helped design for Thundercats, uh, Silverhawk, 
and um, gosh, what's the other one? The Tiger Sharks. And <laughs> he is. Uh, this is amazing. All over the how place did he get in that era for comedy? Dude, he 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 got the job to do. Um, I don't know the story behind this album in particular, but he has done hip hop covers before because he was heavily uh, working on comic book covers. So he worked in animation for a long uh, in his earlier career, but later on he started working on comic book covers. And if you click to the next slide, you're going to see some of the comic books he worked on. Oh, is this? Oh, so oh cool. for is that Conan? Wait, we just yeah. looked in Frazetta. We just looked in Frazetta <laughs> by association. We just looked in Frazetta. So here I've got the other Nucleus album he did. Oh, this is amazing, called too. Space is, Space is the Place. But before we rip into Conan, because I love to talk about Conan. I love the Conan. I want to talk about um, I want to talk about Nucleus and how they were formed. Originally, they were known as the Jam on Productions. Jam um, on it. Yeah, formed 1977 in Brooklyn, New York, the the heart of hip hop. And uh, this included Ben Cosmo D. Cenac or Kenac. Sorry, Ben, if I'm not pronouncing it right. His cousins Monique. Uh, Angevin and Pierre Pete Angevin. Pierre and then, Pete? Pierre Pete. Dude, and that they, is they, amazing. <laughs> and they were doing block parties, just like Cool Her, in uh, Brooklyn. And by 1979, their group had added some more members. Uh, Yvette, Lady E. Cook, who would later marry Cosmo D. Um, <laughs> and then Bob Chili B. Crafton, who would later Bob marry Chili B? Monique. Yeah, so they brought their boyfriend and girlfriends in, and the uh, the, ba- the the group got bigger. And dude, this um, sounds like the rap version of, of Romeo and Juliet. Like you have to- <laughs> <laughs> this is like the rap version of yeah of uh, uh, the Brady Bunch, where they did the, the, the group just keeps getting bigger. <laughs> as, you know, you you add the D, you add the E, you got B in there. You got uh, Monique. She didn't get a, she didn't get a name. I don't know why Monique didn't get a cool name, but. Um, you might be wondering why their first album is called Jam on Revenge. <laughs> uh, it, it's like it's like Vanilla Ice saying he's back with a brand new mission. Um, yeah, it's called Jam on Revenge because um, with Jam on Productions, there was a bunch of different DJs, and Salvador Smooth kept nagging. Um, yes, kept Salvador nagging uh, Cosmic D. He he kept nagging Cosmo D to do a rap song because rap songs were happening at the time, and they were doing hip-hop and it's kind of strange to think hip-hop and rap being different from each other but they were doing these block parties and if you watch that documentary about the uh the the evolution of hip-hop you see that it was almost like disco-y they were wearing these outfits none of them were like they weren't what you would think of as hip-hop outfits they were wearing leather and costumes right and they were doing these like dance parties it was a different scene and and then rap records started happening and they didn't really think much of it but he kept nagging them to do it and he said you know what I'll do a parody jam of a rap record. And he and then he actually threw in another idea from a rap battle in which a DJ they had just blown out in the battle said, yeah, you guys are bad, but can you do this? Wiki, 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 wiki. Meaning like <laughs> you don't scratch turntables. So how, how could you be that good? And so he threw that in the jam on uh, revenge, revenge against rap records and that DJ. And uh, he would play it at parties and it would just fill the floor. And uh, he he had this tape that he had extra space, so he just filled it out with that song. But when he was shopping the, the group around, that's the song that people kept wanting to talk about and hear. And so he was like, cool. They rolled with it. They changed their name to Nucleus. And we got... Jam on Revenge? Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, we got Jam on Revenge and we got Bob Camp. <laughs> And um, I'll so go back to Bob. Bob Camp. How does Bob get on the scene here? Well, Bob gets on the scene. He was working for Marvel Comics at the time, and this is one of his earlier pieces. I mean, he was he was doing designs for animation, but he was working with um, uh, Marvel to do uh, different comics, and he specialized. In, from what I found, he did a lot of covers. He didn't do a lot of the sequential art. He did a lot of covers. Now I've got a Conan uh, spread here, you right get next a con- to the second album. And 
and I have to mention, like, in the album covers, you've got, like, all of the perfect, you know, uh, cartoon. You've got, like, the, the, the weird eel dragon. You've got, <laughs> you've yeah. got the uh, heroic suits. Uh, you've got no glass domes because their beats are so powerful they can survive in space. Um, but if you click to the next slide, I found some incredible artwork and incredible series I can, to work I can on. see why this appeals to you, Inks, because it's polarizing. This, is, this guy, this the Uncle Bob here, he, he, he's got this darkness in him that he's doing, and but he can also channel that fun, funky, fresh right. beats. Right, you know, you, bold. You can, it's bold. All, you can, all these, you can um, channel personality. These nucleus are just bold and just popping with color, and they're fun. They're fun. And, um, they're dynamic. And they're fun, you know. Yeah. And then you you go over, and suddenly Conan's thinking about eating blueberries with his father, <laughs> and uh, yeah, just the, remember yeah. just severing a dude. Yeah. With my father. And the next slide is just great. It's that's some classic depressing nom. I slammed into this, and I thought immediately of tapes. He worked on a comic book series called The Nam. Now it is it is jarring to go from these joyful hip hop covers with the with the graffiti style letters and the and the the the, the, the <laughs> but he's he's great at, at portraying personality and emotion. And the fun-loving personality is now transformed into the weight of the Vietnam War. This is the last piece of artwork he did for the NAM. Now, there's a number of illustrators that worked on the NAM. But if you move on to the next slide, I've got three of the covers. I think he did uh, six or seven, but I've got three of my favorite covers that he did from the NAM. Oh, these are, yeah, yeah, these, these are great. great. And the, I, I have to go and read this series now. I, I didn't get a chance to do it before the show, but looking at... Um, these dynamic covers that he's got, um, I, I, I have to know more. The covers are doing their job and they are reaching out and they are, oh, yeah. they are calling the to third me. one. The third one is, um, we have some of the Viet Cong. It looks like they're in a tunnel down below in the bottom half of the image. And then, uh, in the middle, you get a little bit of sort of the darkness of the underground, kind of like a cross section kind of deal. And you can see the boots of the American troops on the top. Like looking yeah. for them. It's super, super cool. effective. Yeah. This is this is what's so cool about this, folks. I mean, so if you go if you go and you look up Uncle Bob here, he's drinking Shasta Light. He's he's doing <laughs> he's doing. He just looks like the nicest guy. He does. He's doing fun cartoons. I can actually see him doing the the nucleus ones, right? I can see him doing that. It looks like he does comics for a living. He does fun fun comics that people love. Um, you know that that nucleus album just looks like a good time. But then inside of his brain somewhere, he's remembering when Gilroy Evans, his best friend, lost half of his body and he had to drag him 20 miles to the nearest, nearest HQ, you know? Yeah, that, that first cover, I've got, I've got Sarge and, and probably his name will be Moose. And they are loading up a body <laughs> onto um, a stretcher that is being pulled up by a... Uh, a helicopter, you're almost looking outside of the helicopter. The cross hatching on the ground and, and each stone is just fantastic. It's classic so pen work. It is incredible. Moose is losing his mind with grief. He is you can hear his bellow of no you, Sarge <laughs> is is pissed off that the, the He's uh, like, get your ass back yeah. down. <laughs> I need this body pulled up yesterday. You and know, I, the emotion it's it's amazing because this episode has really been an episode of of polar opposites and surprises. Like I mean, but but connections somehow. But that's and, yeah. And well, this shows versatility and the importance of versatility. Like, you know, you can get kind of stuck in doing the same thing over and over again. Um, we talk about Brom a lot on this, and we mentioned it in a previous episode, but Brom got burnt out just yeah, doing the same thing over and over again. Uh, and so he went and he made some changes with how he did things and it worked out for the best. Um, and it kind of reinvigorated him. Um, clearly in this case, I mean, yeah, you can do fun rap, you know, hip hop albums. Um, but then you're jumping over and you're doing, you know, bloodthirsty barbarians and Vietnam stuff. Right. Or, or even, that or shows even you know, vice versa. Maybe he was doing all that nom shit and, and he was like, man, I need to do something. I need something to do something that's just fun, fun yeah. and, and creative. So right. I'm going to do some pterodactyls exactly. 
flying a funky spaceship <laughs> through the desert. Uh, Inks, do yeah, you know? I know. What? I, I, yeah, the, the, again, the, the first slide with the nucleus, you've got you've got the uh, you've got the spaceship over a barren wasteland, and you know, I guess the connection between all of his work is is he knows where to put detail and he knows where to yeah. not put detail. He doesn't need to spend That's detail important. on the sky. He doesn't need to spend detail on the cloud or even the dragon. He puts a lot of detail into the spaceship. the faces, the suits, and the yeah. spaceship. Again, back down to the nam covers you don't put a lot of detail he doesn't have a whole lot of detail going into um the helicopter or anything but the crew that's on the ground every little stone is shaded if you look at the middle cover where maggie o'rourke is about to take her lunch outside <laughs> to um and there's an explosion it's a lunch going of scissors on. And, yeah. and syringes moose is, moose is flying at her all of the detail is on her is on moose and the explosion the sky doesn't have a whole lot going on the, the building doesn't have a whole lot going on. And that's important is to know where to put your detail, where to put your energy and time. And um, it's so cool I that you're a master. That's, that's at a failure of that's a failure of mine. Actually, I feel like me too. So many my, my best paintings are when I hold back and I go, yes. no, I'm not going to put anything there. Um, oftentimes, like I've been wrestling with this piece for like over a month now. And it's just too much detail, but you get to a point where you can't go back, really. Right. Learn from every piece. And, and, and all of this stuff happened around the same time. You got Jam on Revenge again, 1984. 1985, Space is the Place. And then um, he was working on Conan the Barbarian in 1985 and then went straight to the Nam, 1986. Damn. And then later Damn, on in 1989, that's when he went to to uh, help form the studio that started Ren and Stimpy and got in that really like comic that that real comical, you know, cartoon character. And again, I'm not a big Ren and Stimpy fan, not because I don't want to be just because it, it just wasn't a thing that I was into. I was into dinosaurs and Thundercats and stuff like that. Time. But <laughs> but um, yeah, you can you can see the style carry over at the time and he you know you never know what you're going to end up doing too you're doing comic book covers and you get contacted by you know a studio wanted to uh to immortalize the jam on crew on these <laughs> classic albums that weren't very popular at the time but are now considered classics get what you know what if you just if you like something and no one else likes it fuck it get it yeah. keep it one day you may have a classic and if you don't you still like what you see. You like what you see. You like what you see, and you learn from it. Well, folks, once again, we have completed a, another episode of What's in the Box. What's, What's in, the, in box? the Box? It's been a fun one, folks. Go out and, uh, man, I, I tell you, this every time we do this, uh, I, I find something unexpected. This has absolutely been an unexpected episode. Great finds, guys. Like, really cool stuff. Well, thank you all again for being a part of this journey as we uncover the mysteries behind these awesome covers. Our website is CoverDecoder.com. Yes. If you have questions, comments, or covers uh, for us, uh, send them to CoverDecoder at gmail.com. Also, check, out, uh, check us out on Instagram at CoverDecoder. Mm -hmm. Please like, review, and follow us uh, on whatever platform you're listening to. It helps us a ton, and we're forever grateful. Forever. And remember, if you look at covers... You like what you see. You like, you like what, what you, you see. see.